Right Voice of Hawaii. It's the Rick Kamada program on News Radio 830 KHBH. KHBHradio.com. Well, welcome to uh, hour number two of the big show. Uh, the morning is going to fly by, as you can well imagine. And I'm glad you're a part of it. If you're out uh, on the roadways, have a traffic update for us that we should know about, uh, be sure and give us a call. And we'll update you with TC with uh, his primetime traffic updates. Plus, coming up in the next hour, Richard Criccio joins us and all that. So thank you again for choosing us. Uh, Wednesday, it is a t- Hawaii Republican Assembly in the House with Tito Montez. And, Tito, thanks for being with us. Good morning to you. Great to be here. Listen, we have um, – there's a lot going on. Oh, it, it affected us uh, yesterday at the uh, Commander Pacific Fleet. Yeah. Uh, government um, civil employees going in to sign their furlough slips and uh, heading home. Yeah. A lot of important work on hold. Um, a lot of other things, too. Uh, you know, the commissary uh, was a big thing. My wife uh, rushed down there the other day, uh, or it was yesterday, with the mad rush to uh, – Get what she could before they shut down, and uh, it's a shame. I mean, she said it was like Soviet-style food lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, just you know, pandemonium down there. And uh, you know, the sad thing about it is, it's not just the fact that you're standing in line, but it's like you know, a lot of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines who live on this island depend. And I'm not talking about like that they they can choose to shop there. I mean, they strictly depend on the commissary and the exchange services here to make it on this island. So. Hopefully most of them were able to get there and get their groceries and, uh, you know, be able to wait this thing out until this thing blows over. And if they can't, they're going to be hurting. About 30 uh, percent more expensive to shop outside of the commissaries. You have that. I was just talking about this in the last hour. You have that kind of increase on your family budget mm-hmm. without the associative increase of revenue. Right. You're in a tough, tough situation. And, and, it's, and it's, it's those guys. But, um, you know, anything with the government, you know, when you shut something down and then you got to get it restarted again. Uh, it just costs so much more. So lots of inefficiency, lots of waste. And part of that's going to be restocking. Exactly. All the produce, mm-hmm. all the produce, fruits, vegetables, perishables. anything that's perishable is going yep. in the garbage can. I understood we had a caller yesterday. She was indicating that there was actually a surcharge, five cents uh, on every dollar that uh, was supposed to be put into some sort of a contingency fund. I hope I have that number correctly, she had called. Mm-hmm. And uh, evidently that was to stave off if there was ever a disruption. And clearly that, that didn't take place. Uh, not to my knowledge, Rick. Yeah. Uh, that's that's news to me. But, um, you know, a lot of these uh, these soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that, that serve out here, uh, you know, believe it or not, uh, in the military, uh, it's not easy to get people to come out here and live in Hawaii. Um, that's true for for several reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, people have the uh, the idea that oh you're going to get stationed in Hawaii that's great you know and you know believe it or not the the consensus amongst the military is that they don't. So a lot of people here uh, you know while they do enjoy their stay uh, are not in an ideal place and the reason is because they know the public schools are bad, uh, not a good place for kids to grow up, uh, and it's very expensive. Uh, and it's the expense, uh, and, and even though the, the military tries to do a good job and take care of these guys and giving them increased, you know, BAH, which mm-hmm. is, you know, a bachelor allowance for housing, uh, all their BAS, which is, you know, the allowance for sustenance and all that other stuff, all that stuff is meant to increase, but it doesn't, you know, meet right, exactly close. all the needs. So, uh, you know, they're out here and, and they're trying to make it. And, uh, one of the reasons they don't want to come out here is because of the cost. And now it just got worse. I was, uh, talking with Orson Swindle years ago. Yes. This is back in 1996, and we were at a function that was out near Pearl Harbor. And I'll never forget the conversation with one of the officers that was there, and Orson and I were chatting with him. And he was exactly saying what you've just said. Mm-hmm. So the perception is that this is a great place for duty. And he said, the people, it's beautiful, and all of this. Three things that stood out. One was the cost. Mm-hmm. Two was the education. And back in the day, it was pet quarantine. <laughs> it was, yeah. they, I've I've been through that. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and when military men and women they said, no, we we don't want to go because yeah. of all of that. And then also tension between locals and military. Now whether it's actual or perceived, yeah, that was that was part of what was expressed too. You know what, Rick? I don't I don't know how long ago that took place, but I nineteen ninety six. Ninety six. Okay. Well, I was here um, active duty in the military from ninety four to ninety eight, mm-hmm. and uh, I never experienced that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I'm just a data point of one. Uh, and I don't really hear too many complaints uh, from people today, at least a lot of people that, that I work with at Pack Fleet, a lot of the active duty members and everything. I don't hear that as a major complaint mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, one of the things that, uh, you, know, you know, when I got the job out here in Pack Fleet, and one of the reasons why my wife and I and our family jumped on it is one of the reasons is because out here in Hawaii, we felt that, you know, there's, there was more of an accepting culture, you know, um, there's really no true racial majority here or anything like that. Everybody's a really good eclectic mix, and uh, we felt really comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. So uh, never really felt – and I live down in Eva Beach, okay? And mm-hmm. Eva Beach is – you know, probably couldn't be more bifurcated in the fact that you have – Newer development homes like Ocean Point, Eva by Gentry, and then you got the older sections of Eva, uh, you know, that have been there since, you know, the sugarcane plantation mm-hmm. days, you know, and uh, never felt that M- and always felt welcome. Uh, and, and, and the people here uh, is one of the reasons why we came back. Yeah. Uh, you're dialed in together. It is uh, News Radio 830 KHH with Tito Montez. Tell us about Hawaii Republican Assembly before we. Take our traffic update there, Tito, please. Uh, the Hawaii Republican Assembly. Uh, what, one thing I want to tell you about, first of all, is that we got a lot of great information uh, about this upcoming special session on our website. And I would encourage anybody to uh, go to our website, www.hawaiirepublicanassembly.com, uh, and check out a lot of our links. Uh, also, uh, we're going to have a Hira Town Hall Roadshow meeting, uh, one of the first in a series that we're going to be doing uh, across the islands and different communities out in Eva Beach. It's going to be at Asing Park. Uh, Representative Bob McDermott, uh, House District 40, is going to be our keynote speaker. A lot of great information coming out, and plus the most important thing is going to be free pizza. Well, and what's that date again, time, and can I get there an hour early? October 3rd, 7 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, uh, out there at Asing Park and Renton Road. You can go to our website and find the address and all the uh, pertinent details to get there. Uh, before we do go, I remember, and, and thank you for the update on, on the website, et cetera. What's the mission of the Hawaii Republican Assembly? And, of course, you're going to have people still wondering what's the correlation right. between the party. The mission of the uh, uh, Hawaii Republican Assembly is to actively, openly, and fearlessly promote conservative principles and values throughout the island to educate voters and get conservatives into positions in our party and into our government. There you have it. And uh, website, of course, uh, you can find information there, but also talk with Tito during this hour. Uh, we'll continue our conversation. Glad you're with us here at News Radio 830 KHVH. KHVH. Now back to more of the Rick Hamada program on KHVH, where Hawaii's voice is heard. All right, it is uh, 7:22 in the morning. News Radio. I let you just get your general take on on the shutdown because the local rhetoric is being driven primarily by our Democrat representatives. And they're, they're determining, they're establishing the narrative that we're being treated to, whether it's in the newspaper, television news, et cetera. I did hear David Chang uh, on a morning show earlier today mm-hmm. on TV, and that at least, it was interesting though, and I'm not slamming on David, but it was interesting because when he was, when he was giving the, the other side, so to speak, sure. he always referred to them as, you know, Republicans are doing this, and, you know, and the Republicans are that, and, and the Republicans need to... And the Republicans, I'm going, dude, you're a Republican. Why aren't you putting in the context of what we need to do and what we're saying and what we're doing? Yeah. And I know that sounds picky and maybe, but it just seems like there's a disconnect a little bit about ownership and or yeah. position. So I don't know what your take is of the whole shutdown deal. Well, um, I, I didn't hear David's uh, talk about that. And just from you describing it here right now, uh, I, I didn't really have that same thought about, you know, rather than Republicans refer to it as we, what we need to do. I think uh, one of the things that um, the Republican Party needs to do is frame it on what the Democrats are doing and uh, how, how they're framing it is not uh, the correct way of looking at this, you know, uh, it's their mess. They own it. Okay. And one of the things that shocks me especially is that, you know, you see a lot of different polls around there, but it's consistent that between like 55 and 60% of the American people don't want Obamacare or don't like its implement implementation or, or any way that it's being uh, done out there. Uh, so it's an unpopular program. It's getting rammed through. And, uh, you know, what really shocks me is, is that, you know, Obama is more willing to negotiate with, you know, dictatorial regimes like Syria and Iran and, and rather than sit down with, with John Boehner and, and the rest of the Republicans in the House and, and, and you know, and in the Senate and try and work this thing out. Um, you know, if you, if you look at it, it's all his mess. He owns it. Uh, his failed leadership has got us to this position. And now he's using political brinksmanship 
uh, to go ahead and say and, and throw it back in the Republicans' faces when really it's been the will of the people all along that the House members have voted on and put the budget up for to the Senate that they're not listening to. But there's also the other side, and I go through this all the time, so yep. but here we go. Obamacare's law, it was drafted, it was passed. Both the Senate and Congress affirmed it. The president signed it. It's been law for the past couple of years. So the fact that, you know, the ownership, we understand, but it did go through our our legislative process. It is the law of the land. So why attach an existing law to, you know, policies that have ostensibly really nothing to do? I'm just parroting what the other side says. Sure. Really nothing to do with why the government should be shut down and these services should end and people aren't getting paid, yada, yada. So Right. I mean, there's, I don't think there's absolutely any reason why uh, the federal government couldn't pass a budget uh, and just delay Obamacare and, and get the kinks worked out and, uh, and everything else. Now, you know, that's talking from uh, the standpoint that you just said, hey, it's already been passed. You know, what else can we do? I mean, my opinion all along was that this law should have never been passed. It should have been repealed. And you know, now the people who, uh, you know, voted for Obama a second time, you know, you're getting what you paid for. So, uh, you know, it, it's hard to really go ahead. And, you know, I have to go ahead and, and admire guys like, uh, you know, Senator Ted Cruz and all these other guys who, who are really trying to stand against this and, and trying to get it defunded because that's about the only avenue that we have now because of all the things that you just said. It's been put through. It's been passed. The, you know, the president signed it. Uh, this is really the, the last stand of what we can do until, uh, you know, there's a change in the Oval Office or, you know, another shift of uh, leadership in the uh, in the Senate. And, and that's one of the other uh, points of conversation that we contend with because and, – and I'm not in disagree. I think Obamacare and et cetera is one of the most um, you know, negatively impacting uh, policies. Mm-hmm. However, that said, we did have an election uh, two times, 2008, mm-hmm. 2012. There was the opportunity. Mitt Romney ran on the position of we're going to end this. This is one of the centerpieces of my administration along with others, of course. And still, not by a majority, big majority, but President Obama did win out. And all I'm trying to bring up is there are – the narrative can be a very compelling one Mm -hmm. if there's not a balance of what the other side and what the the truth is from the perspective of the GOP and why this is taking place. Right, and and I sure hope that the GOP um, on Capitol Hill shows some courage. And actually frames this in language uh, that it's supposed to be framed in. And, you know, we can go through all the post analysis of the elections and everything like that. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But now how do we move forward? And, you know, on a local level, that's what, you know, the Hawaii Republican Assembly is here for. You know, we're trying to move forward so we can shift the tides. We can swing the pendulum back uh, in an area where we can have a better balance in our own state uh, local government uh, than it is now. And, uh, you know. When Obama uh, first won election back in 2008, he had the House, he had the Senate until, you know, the 2010 shift in the House when, you know, a lot of Tea Party and more conservative uh, representatives were elected Mm -hmm. to Congress. Um, So a lot of that stuff that you're talking about got rammed through in the very early beginning, uh, and it was a train wreck uh, going over the cliff that was really difficult to stop. But like I said, that's why we exist here because we know what's happened in the past. We've tried to do the post analysis on it, and we're all scratching our heads as to why a man like Obama would be you know, reelected a second time, and we kind of have some ideas, and you know, they're very divisive, and I think they're the truth, but we got to move forward. we got to get people energized. we got to get people excited, and one of the things we have to do is fight that narrative, Rick, and we have to be, like I always say for, for Hira, active, open, and fearless. Can't pull any punches. It is John out in Mililani. John, welcome. You're on with uh, Tito Montez. I have a Montez. couple questions for Tito. Sure. Tito, so you're saying the majority of the people don't want Obamacare, yet the majority of people voted for Obamacare when the elections happened. How do you figure? Hey, that's a good question, man. That's an anomaly we've been trying to figure out forever. Uh, I'm just telling you what the polls are saying out there today. What polls? Why are, if the people were against it, why are they out on the streets like they protested the Iraq war? <laughs> if they were so against Obamacare, why are they out there on the streets? Hey, you know what? You're going to be feeling it too, my friend, here in a little while. Of course so. I'm feeling it. I, it's because I voted for Obama. Yeah, well. You're saying I didn't want this, but I did. I am the voter. I am the majority who voted him in. I wanted Obamacare. It's the you guys, the Republicans who don't want it. Yeah, and, and good reason too. And uh, when you see how much of a part-time economy yeah, we're going to be Yeah, it's more about you than it is the people, right? It's going to be hurting a lot of stuff, my friend. It's all about you than the people, right? 
Not what I'm, what I'd say that again. You're using what? It's more about you, your party, than it is about the people's voice, right? No, absolutely not, my friend. You got it wrong. Well, it, the it people is, voted for it, right? The majority. Hey, a lot of times people vote for things and uh, they don't know why they're voting, my friend. That's why we're big on voter education. Oh, right, so you're gonna dictate what we voted for? You're very angry. You want to calm down a little bit? Of course, because I'm not getting paid today, idiot. Hey, 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 hold on a second here. Hey, you're getting what you want. You voted for Obama. You're getting Obamacare, and now you're out of work, and you're screaming at me? I'm getting Obamacare. Yes, I am, but I'm not getting a job because you Republicans are passing this budget. Sorry, my friend. You're wrong. You're not getting a job because of the Democrats that are in office, my friend. A part-time economy, lie high unemployment, businesses can't survive. That's why you don't have a job. That's true. It is true. Obama True. Empirical evidence, my friend. You're on the street right now with no job. You got Obamacare. That's what you voted for. You want no, to change? Yeah, I voted for Obamacare. I didn't vote to have my job on hold because the Republicans said it didn't vote to pass it. Well, unfortunately, a lot comes with Obama than just Obamacare, and now you're getting it. Yeah, it's great for the Republican Party, right? No, it's if not great. It, it's not great for the Republican we Party. Voice, didn't we? It's we a terrible thing that's happening. We voted for Obamacare. We wanted it. So where is it? It's a terrible thing that's happening, and I feel for everybody out there who's out of work, and I want to see people working. I want to see this economy booming, and you're not going to get it with socialist uh, redistribution policies like you got with Obama. Just because you don't like something, but the people like it? Is that fair? The poll, is that democracy? The polls right now say they don't like it anymore. Dictators, right? Voter the regret. democracy is what the people want. The people wanted Obamacare. They showed it in the polls. But you're dictating, no, that's not good for you, the majority people. This is what you want. That's the dictator. You need to calm down, my friend. Tell me to calm down, because I have no freaking money. I'm working for free. I'm sorry, man. That's really terrible, and I feel for you. All right, John. Uh, we appreciate the call. One one eight hundred. No, one triple eight five six five eighty three eighty three. I appreciate the call, John. Thank you very much indeed. And that's what I was alluding to: is that you have there is a segment of folks. That are there, that are that are angry about this. The perception is that the Republicans are doing this and yeah. all of that. And and then the Republicans need to step up and clear up that narrative. Uh, obviously, he's following a line of logic that just doesn't make sense. And uh, I, I will say this, Rick. I don't like to argue with people like that. I truly feel bad for him. Uh, anybody who's out of work, or you know, to be told you're out of work, or somebody who's an employer and has to tell somebody you're out of work is a terrible, terrible <laughs> thing. Let me let me just go touch on another thing and why I feel really bad for these folks is because, you know, one of the things, you know, we, we've been talking about marriage a lot on the last, you know, few shows and everything, and, and we know what's coming up. But, you know, one of the things that I see on a personal level in my dealings with, with the community and everything is that when you have this economic uncertainty, when you have people out of work, it, it leaves this tension uh, that builds up in families because you don't know if you're going to be able to make your mortgage next week. You don't know if you're going to have a job the next week. So many people that I know now, especially in my church, are out of work or working part time or they're constantly filling out paperwork to apply for this and this to try and cover all their bases because they don't know if their job is going to be there or they know it's going to end. But the logic thing that he's missing is, is that, look, a lot came with Obama and not just Obamacare. OK, you even he said it himself during his 2008 campaign. Yeah, we need to spread the wealth around. You know, I believe in redistribution of wealth, and that's what you're getting. You know, you're getting an economy that's depressed, that's overburdened uh, with the government with debt. Taxes are going up. Nothing is looking good on the horizon. And and uh, unfortunately, you get the whole package when you voted for Obama. 7.33 in the morning. I'm already at the bottom of the hour break. And Tito Montez in studio, Hawaii Republican Assembly, taking your telephone calls right after this. Bottom of the hour news. Libby is going to be up next and more of your calls. For Tito Montez, it's 7.33. Now back to more of the Rick Hamada program on KHVH, where Hawaii's voice is heard. You dialed in together, News Radio 830 KHVH. It is the Rick Hamada program. Caller says that the uh, president made many changes to Obamacare without getting approval since he first presented it to everyone. So maybe what uh, folks uh, believe that they were voting on uh, may not have actually been. But that is uh, for discussion. Libby, uh, Wailua, then Curtis, Steve, and more. Libby, aloha. Welcome. Aloha, kakahiaka, fellas. Good to hear from you. Aloha. Okay, I'm not going to call you an idiot, Tito. Okay, thank you. It, you know what? I, you know, hey, I've spent 24 years in the military. I've been chewed out before. I'll, I'll be chewed out again some other time. You know, it's okay. 
Yeah, you came across with somebody, you know, who's <laughs> right now. Okay, well, I did vote for Obama twice. I'm very disappointed in him. Um, I've been very close to not voting for him the second time, but I didn't really care for Romney. Um, um, the thing that to me is the worst about Obama is Benghazi. Okay, I think yeah. he'll never live that one down. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, it's not going to be so much what happened as it seems to have been a cover up after. Yeah, absolutely, and um, of course, with a uh, a press core that's it, that's in the bag for you, uh, you know, if the if the coin was flipped to the other side, if that was a Republican president, uh, you know, we'd have Nixon uh, trials all over again. So, um, but I I definitely share your feelings uh, about the Benghazi incident. Um, yeah. You know, being a former military member, and uh, you know, one of our credos is, uh, you know, you don't leave anybody out to dry, you don't leave Americans uh, hanging uh, in danger. Uh, you always go back for your people, and uh, it was a real disappointment to uh, to learn the facts uh, of the timeline or the things that went on and the things that could have happened. And uh, you know, four guys, um, you know, could have been alive today. So yeah, it hurts a lot. Yeah, it does hurt. Okay, now this whole thing with the the Obamacare. Now, it seems to me as though. When the argument was first being made for some kind of government intervention, it started out thinking, oh, how dare you say that American health care isn't any good? That wasn't what was being said. It was the delivery of said health care that was the issue. And so finally we got around to something that, as far as I'm concerned, we still don't know what it is because it has to be passed for it to be read. And I don't know of anybody who's read it from end to end. So what what do we have? Well, really, yeah, you're right. I mean, three thousand something pages uh, for legislation is, uh, is is just preposterous. But you know, I was against this Obamacare thing a long, long time ago when uh, you know even Hillary Clinton was talking about uh, you know socializing medicine and everything because. Lots of things happen when you hand over to the government. Lots of inefficiencies, uh, just red tape, bureaucracy, and, and everybody knew it was going to be very expensive. But one of the founding principles, and uh, a, a great economist, Thomas Sowell, said, you know, when you, when you make uh, the cost zero, demand goes to infinity. And that's exactly what's happening uh, here when you socialize medicine. And what I can't understand is that, you know, socialized medicine has existed in a lot of European countries and around the world for years, and uh, these things have turned out to be nightmares. And I can't understand how anybody here in the United States thinks that we can do it any differently and uh, not, you know, come out with the same result. So those are one of the things that that baffle me. I, I just I don't like to turn over things that private sector can do much better into the hands of the government, where you're taking other people's money and spending it on someone else, which is what Milton Freeman said was the most inefficient way to to, to transfer money. Libby, we thank you so much for your call. We appreciate it. Many more joining us at 7:44. And we'll head out to Waikiki. Curtis is online with us. Curtis, aloha and welcome. Thanks, Rick. Hello, okay. sir. I'd hey, like Curtis. to ask a technical question about the government closing and a featured question about Obamacare. Sure. My technical question is, since the government's absolute value of being closed means Obama doesn't have an office to go to, who is he now? <laughs> Are we in a de facto state of martial law because he's still riding around in Air Force One as the civilian commander-in-chief of the Department of Defense? And then the uh, feature question about Obamacare is uh, when a person is healthy, ruled so, gets his three months of food stamps and still looking for a job and can't find it, and he's still got to insure himself like a car, what does that mean to families like that? Well, that, that's great that you bring it up because that's the conundrum uh, with all these government programs and, and trying to legislate every single possible systemic interaction that the humans uh, can have out here. But uh, you bring a great point. You know, Rick and I were just talking about that on the break about, uh, you know, Obama still operating and, and Congress still operating when the rest of the government is shut down. Yeah, that, that does seem kind of uh, disparate in a sense that uh, people here today, especially lots of people here today on the island, are out of work, uh, being furloughed and everything else, and uh, they're still operating. And the other thing that is really disparate is that, you know, everybody uh, is supposed to be, um, you know, signing up for this Obamacare thing, but, uh, gee, isn't uh, certain, you know, Congress and other people exempt uh, from that? That's That's kind of frustrating to me. Thank you very much uh, for the call. We appreciate it greatly. Steve, out in Haleiwa. Steve, you're on with Tito Montez. Good morning. Good morning, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. 
Hey, Tito, I want to say that I really appreciate uh, your participation in Rick's program. In fact, it's due in large part to that that I recently received my membership to the Assembly, my membership card. Oh, hey, great, Steve. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Hey, just before the last you're, you're, you're not you're not you're not going to call me an idiot, are you? Or anything oh like no, that? no, absolutely not. Okay, absolutely great. not. But <laughs> to that to that subject, just before the last news break, you had a rather hysterical, low information, non essential government employee caller who did jump all over you. And I'd like to offer some perspective to that to those types uh, sure. to say that Obamacare is the people's choice and that it's the law of the land. Um, as to the former. It was back when it was first ramrodded through Congress uh, that the then Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, indicated that we had to pass the bill before we found out what was in it. Well, we're finding out what's in it. <laughs> exactly. And it's, not, and it's not good. And second of all, how many times, I think at least a dozen, has our leader changed the bill mm -hmm. to his benefit? That's right. So, in fact, as, as you indicate, the polls now show, given those two conditions, that it is not a popular choice. Okay? So, I'll... You know, let you comment on that, and I'll go off the air. No, Steve, thank you. Yep, Steve, thank you very much uh, for bringing that up. You're exactly right. Anything else for Steve's call? Uh, yeah, you know, just uh, going back to what he says, um, a lot of people were, I, I think, duped into believing that this was going to be a great thing. It was being pushed uh, as this uh, super needed thing. And um, I think he hit the main thing, low information voter. Robert out in Wisconsin. Robert, welcome to the program. Hello. Thank you, Rick. I just have to talk to Tito. I mean, they're talking about government health care here. If I'm not mistaken, Tito, wasn't that an illegal act when they were put up in Supreme Court that he could not do, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Was the health care bill? He could only tax, but he couldn't have a health care bill, right? It was something like that, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding why this individual has broken the First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, and the Tenth Amendment, and he's still standing in my White House. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Yeah. And, and then you got this individual that, that screamed at you just cracks me up because I want to know where I'm going to send my tax bill. I need his address so he can pay my tax bill when this care goes into plan. Yeah. You know, uh, Robert, um, and, and thanks for calling from all the way out in Wisconsin. Uh, give our respect to, uh, to your governor, Scott Walker, out there. But um, there's a lot of things about Obama that make me wonder how he's still in office. I mean, there's the IRS scandal. Um, you know, Libby uh, called a little while ago and talked about Benghazi. Um, it's, it baffles me. It absolutely does uh, how this guy uh, could still be the leader of the, uh, the best nation in the world. It's unreal. And like Solyndra. The money he gave Solyndra, oh, I obviously down the toilet. that individual that called you didn't understand that Solyndra was given tons of money and filed bankruptcy a month later. Yep. And GM was given $50 billion and said $4.7 billion is what we paid back with interest. What happened to the rest of our money? <laughs> down the tubes. Down the you know, tubes. And, and anyway. that's, that's the sad thing about it is that the lack of accountability for uh, a lot of these egregious acts that uh, these politicians do is uh, it's just really a, a slap in the face to the American people. Appreciate the call, Robert. It's always a pleasure all the way from uh, beautiful uh, Wisconsin. Uh, thanks so very much. I want to go to uh, I'm going to go to primetime traffic in just a moment. And uh, first off, welcome Ron out in Kailua. It is 749 for Tito Montez. Good morning. Hey, hey yeah, thanks for taking my call. I sure. just wanted to uh make a quick comment on that guy, John. Um, just, I just want to know why people like that are okay with, uh, if this Obamacare is so good for the rest of this, how come they're okay with the elitist class in D.C. not not taking it on themselves? And also, if they are taking it on, why are they getting entitlement for it? And then, uh, I just don't understand. It seems like a, he's just full of low information, you know? Yeah, Ron, that, that's a great point, and uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, it's like I said a little bit earlier, the reason why the Republican Assembly out here exists is because we got to move forward. And we have to get those conservatives and, and those good uh, Republican politicians uh, elected into office so we can go ahead and start changing these things in the future. It really starts from the bottom up. 7.50 in the morning. Thank you for the call, Ron, very much. Got to run to a traffic update. Tito Montez in studio taking your calls. Coming up right after this. K -H -B -H. This story about the shutdown and the thing with the World War II vets, Tito, mm -hmm. what a story that is. And I've just got more updates uh, online. It, it's symptomatic of, of really what transpired on Capitol Hill and the ancillary, maybe unintended consequence of what's going on. Right. Well, uh, one of the things that I can speak of firsthand is, uh, you know, 
I really wanted to talk about, you know, the, the inconvenience and the, you know, the, a lot of the hardship that's going to be put on our, uh, our, our service members out here in Hawaii. But the other thing that really, really is bad is that, uh, you know, at PAC Fleet especially and at PACOM everywhere, there's a lot of important work going on. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things, Rick, time is of the essence. And uh, that's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really makes me upset uh, that a lot of this work is being put on hold because a lot of those people I depend on for the work that I do. Yeah. So a lot of the inputs that I need from these folks uh, and, and everything, their, their subject matter expertise and everything, uh, it, it's not at uh, my disposal to work together with these guys. So a lot of things are getting put on hold, and uh, that's not good for the military. It's not good for our national security. You can log on and find out more about Tito and the Hawaii Republican Assembly. Uh, noted to be the Republican wing of the Republican Party. The conscience of the Republican Party. Yeah, there you Party. have it. Yep. Affiliated with the National Federation of Republican Assemblies. Uh, October 3rd, yes? Right. So tomorrow night, uh, Thursday, October 3rd, 7 p.m., out in Evie Beach, Osing Park, uh, right on there in Renton Road, across the street uh, a little bit from Zippy's and Tesoro Gas Station. Uh, we're going to have the Hira Road Show. We're going to be talking about a lot of great things about how we can move forward. We're going to be talking about the state of Hawaii and some of the things uh, voters need to know about and what's going on. And we're going to have keynote speaker, Representative Bob McDermott, House District 40. Great. And free pizza. Oh, yeah. Forgot about Can't forget about that. Uh, is it deep dish? Is it Chicago style? You're going to get the real goody two shoes out there? Um, the uh, No, the, it's thin crust. But the, I think the crust is stuffed, though. I think that's the. Oh, uh, well, there you have it. <laughs> I like the ballot boxes in Chicago. Anywhere where you can stuff more cheese is good. Um, give us the update. Uh, we have literally a minute of, of the special session, dates, et cetera, and your involvement in the special session process. Right. Well, we have a coalition uh, going on. Uh, Let the people decide. It's about 40 organizations. And uh, the main thing, there's going to be a rally at the Capitol uh, October 28th. Uh, go to the website, www.hawaiirepublicanassembly.com. You can learn all about it. And uh, there's lots of other things going on, too. Um, check the schedule. Uh, get involved. Uh, I urge everybody to get involved in this process and uh, call your legislator. Special session, of course, for the same-sex marriage question. That's correct. Right. Uh, log on. Website address again, Tito, before we go. That's the Hawaii Republican Assembly, www.hawaiirepublicanassembly.com. You can also send us mail at P.O. Box 2805, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96803. Beautiful. Tito, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Rick. All right. We'll talk with uh, Tito about the same time next month. And in the meantime, you can always log on for more information and learn more. Listen, coming up, we'll uh, tackle some of the day's top stories. And then Richard Criccio of Help You Sell. Honolulu Properties will be in at the bottom of the hour. Stay with us. Fox News coming up right now. Honolulu.